All right, happy Wednesday to everybody. Hope everybody's having a great day. Looks like uh, James and James, good afternoon. Hello. Looks like uh, some nice weather out there. I haven't been able to step outside this uh, this morning. Um, so I, I don't know if you guys got out there, but some really nice weather out there. And James McGinn says, has a smiling face, so I guess he got out there today. We are. Good afternoon to you. Glad to see you here. And to all of you out there um, that are enjoying your lunch, probably. So, um, yeah, kind of a long day yesterday. I don't know if you guys had a long day or not, but uh, really was working with this uh, map problem that we're having um, sporadically, not with everybody. But I would say maybe uh, five, four or five out of, I think we're, we're down to 15 uh, students now, 15 or 16 students now, uh, with the map importing. So doing some research, uh, found out what I think it is. Uh, James Meek says, I couldn't find anything noteworthy in my investigation on the map thing. Yeah, it took me a while, uh, James and everybody else. Um, I had to keep emailing the, the trials to myself. I emailed it from my coordinator, email to our um, class email, open it up, how it didn't work, and try this different avenue. So it took a little bit to, to get it, but I'll, uh, um, I'll play the video that I made. I put it out there, and I put the link in, uh, in the uh, video, video link folder and uh, for, you, for you to look at, but I'll play that today. Um, in fact, I'm going to play that initially uh, out of the gate before we get to the PowerPoint. So we'll get going on that. Um, any any problems or questions other than the map uh, thing that you uh, wanted to discuss or bring up as topic? Um, I'll give you a few seconds to think about that and put in chat. Um, so we talked about site amenities yesterday. And uh, today we're going to go into site planning. So, um, kind of bringing everything in together. Um, as James Meek said yesterday, uh, I think it's his dad, if I'm right, James, that has been helping him understand the layout um, on uh, landscape plans a little bit. I think he's a civil engineer. I think, James, if I got that right, remember. Um, uh, he brought some designs home. Electrical. He's actually an electrical. Okay. Um, so with that, uh, there's different ways to format a sheet. I mean, you can get into multiple, multiple detailed sheets. When I say detailed sheets, it's not necessarily a detail that we'll be talking about in future conversation, but uh, details as far as breaking down uh, maybe a uh, so example for irrigation plan, which we are going to do a, a, a separate irrigation plan, but maybe there's a separate um, uh, hardscape plan. Maybe there's a separate uh, just showing a boundary that, that you might see in a site plan. You can really separate out a lot of these drawings. And what it depends on is the complexity of the job itself um, and uh, as well as the site itself. Uh, how big is the site? Um, some sites are commercial sites. You're going to break those into phases, and you're going to break those into subphases, um, which can be just you know you can run in just depending on the on the project itself. You might be 50, 60 sheets for one subphase, um, so it can get quite in intensive. Um, we're we're kind of navigating the middle road in this class because of time, um, but we're hitting on every I think on every topic that is important that's uh, needed to know um, as you move forward, either in the building um, civil um, industry, um, whether it's construction or civil, um, whichever one it is, um, or if you go into survey and in the, into into the uh, topography of land, or if you go into landscape architecture, it doesn't matter which way you're going to go. Um, I feel this class is hitting. Um, and hopefully you can see that it's, it's tied into a lot of areas. We're hitting on a lot of areas which are tied into a lot of areas in this degree plan. So uh, we do the best we can with the time we have. Uh, 
huge amounts of information and you always have to filter through what's the, the most important, most relevant for the time. All right, well, no questions are popping up there. So I'm going to go ahead and play this video uh, that I made last night, and then we'll discuss any questions after that. <laughs> it was pretty late um, for my day anyway. So the energy level is probably down a little bit, and I don't know if I covered everything, but hopefully um, I got us going in the right direction. So we'll take a look at this, and then we'll come back. So let me do this up. Start sharing here. And station Chrome there, there, share it. And there we go. It should get going. Let me silence my mic. All right. Uh, this is regarding landscape class for the map uh, from Google Maps for the assignments that are not showing up when you email them to me. What has happened after a lot of experimenting, and some of you may know this off the top of your head that are viewing this and probably could have saved me a lot of time, but sometimes you learn better by experimenting and doing it yourself. And I'm going to show you what happened, but um, basically, it, because and I hope this is a problem with everybody that's everybody's having or the issue and they don't realize it. And the reason it's worked in previous semesters is because the map was saved as a JPEG and then copied and put into AutoCAD as a JPEG and then uh, of course scaled and et cetera, et cetera. What has happened for some reason, and I don't know the format changed or something changed, um when you snip the tool and do a save as, uh, it has an option of saving as a, I think it's a GIF um, uh, format. And that's why it's causing an X reference. Uh, when you send it to me, um, there's an X ref that shows up and it's not inserted. I can go through a whole bunch of steps with the X ref and get it in there, uh, but that's not the way it's come across. So. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to show you this. Uh, I've only done it once, and hopefully, I can remember um, how to do it. All right, so here we go. So starting off again from our Google Maps, and then we go ahead and launch the SNP tool. And SNP tool, they say they have a new application on that, um, and I already did this once, so I'm going to go ahead and do a new. And again, make sure you get far enough out, not too far, but uh, you want to be able to have enough information uh, that you can get started on this. So again, snip it. Now, when we do a file and save as, um, right here is JPEG. And here's the GIF, I think I said GIF file that it, it was defaulting to. So check this when you do a save as. Uh, if it says GIF, save it as a JPEG. Save it as a JPEG. And then, of course, uh, put the name in here and where you're saving it to. So I'm going to call this uh, test <laughs> number five. As you can see, I have um, go ahead and choose four. It's going to be JPEG, but this will be number five. All right, and I'm not going to through to go through the whole email because I did test this, but this is the portion that I think was uh, causing problems on my end. And you're saying, hey, the map is there. What's going on? I know I'm sending it right. Um, and so this is the issue on that. So then you save it, and you know it's going to go to your desktop and everything. I'm sorry. I'll try that again to your desktop, and everything is cool. And let me go ahead and open uh, that file up. And if you, I don't know if you know this or not, but if you need to check anything, um, what a file is, just go to the properties on it. And so what did I save that as a SNP test five right there? So right now I'm hovering over that and it shows, you don't even have to go to property, it shows right here item type JPEG. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go ahead and open that. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy that. I'm copying a JPEG compared to the other one. I'm going to go ahead and minimize that, that, and let me see if I have AutoCAD open. Um, I do have it open. And let me bring it over to the screen. Maximize that. So I'll start a new drawing. And like I said, I'm not going to go through the whole email thing because I tested it once and it should work for you. But I just want to show you now. Um, you know, go ahead and set your units, of course, and them to the architectural. Fine, you don't have to go for it. That's fine on that. And then I'm going to, I'm going to right click. Go to clipboard paste and an ortho on, and there's there's my uh, map. And I, I know you're probably going, oh well, that's that's what happens. It all works fine, um, but I think the problem is it's not a. Uh, I want to see G, GFI, it's ground fault inter, uh, interceptor by GIF. I think it was. Um, I think the problem is it wasn't a J, JPEG. So when you are saving it in Google Maps, make sure you do the file and then uh, do a save as. Oops, that wasn't right. File save. You can do that. I have to do a save as because this is already existing. So make sure in Google Maps you do file and save it as a JPEG. And I think that will solve the issue. So I'll have this posted for you. Uh, we'll talk about it more tomorrow. Um, I know there's been a lot of issues with it, and I, this should also resolve the um, the PDF portion when you PDF this. Is a uh, uh, I think the uh, file reference was also showing up as um, in the PDF as well. It's showing up as blank. I'm not sure. I can't remember now. It's too late in the day, evening. So anyway, I've worked at it for a while. Hopefully that will work it out, and I'll get this posted, and we should be good to go. All right. Sorry about that. And I don't know why it changed up because the past semesters, I mean, I'm talking three or four years back. Uh, we've used a SNP tool. We've done this. I don't know if something they changed or I just didn't realize we were picking uh, JPEG or what. Anyway, uh, there you have it. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Go ahead and post any questions. Thanks. All right, so how about some questions from that? Uh, anybody have any questions? Uh, Javier says, my problem is solved. All right, good deal. Well, um, you know, it looks like, you know what you could do, uh, anybody who's having this problem that I responded back to, um, uh, yours was a PN, uh, James Meek says it was PNG file so yeah um and i didn't check for that file extension on there it may have been on there so i don't know what's going on with that like i said we've done this for years but what you might do for any of you that i responded back in the uh sub in your submission on your assignments go ahead and email it to yourself if you have a separate email account uh, like a another uh, msn account or some other you might email it to that account and uh, open open that up in there and see um, if that doesn't make a difference. So uh, you might experiment before you send it. So that's the first thing. Now the next thing, I know a lot of you are thinking, well, you took off points for it. So I'm not going to go back through every single one that had had the issue, or go through back every single email um, and find the ones that had this issue. So I'm going to leave it on you. Email me. Um, I guess you can email me just that one assignment again. If I took off points, if I said on there no map, map is showing up, go ahead and email me. Uh, maybe just just forward that uh, assignment.
breakdown when I did the comments on assignment and gave you the total points. Um, forward that back to me with uh, a new attachment and I'll open it up, make sure it's there, and then I will add points back in. I'll comment in the email how many points I add, add back in, and then I will fix it in the grade book. So I think that covers everything on that issue, I hope. Did I miss anything? There's so many different file extensions. That PNG, I got another one today, C, CBS, I, I think it was. Um, it was CVS, and I never even used that, um, which leads me to a CSV, I'm sorry, CSV format. Uh, somebody asked for some information, which I'll talk about in a second, because it actually pertains to this class, a CS format, CSV format, and I was like, wow, uh, it's crazy. So um, anything else on that topic before I move on to the next topic, before we get to the PowerPoint? All right, hopefully I, that solved it. That video is for review again. Um, it is posted in um, uh, under lessons and then under videos, uh, video lessons for packet three. And it says importing map from Google Map CAD. So if you want to review that there for your viewing pleasure, you know how entertaining they are. All right. Well, no questions on that. So the other one of the other things that came up and that James Meek brought up about Adobe, um, he was saying, and I did receive. In fact, um, I reviewed a couple of drawings this morning, or, uh, earlier today. Yeah, this morning, um, and it was they were not using the Adobe, so they were kind of flipped up, and there's no way to rotate it with whatever format they were using anyway. So. Uh, I know the school had put out an email, I don't know, some time ago about uh, Adobe accessibility for students. And I didn't think it was an issue because I thought the free version just worked fine and everything. But I guess, as James pointed out yesterday, they need to have Pro to, I forgot what we're trying to do with Pro, oh, to do multiple sheets uh, into one PDF, multiple D sheets, for example, into one PDF. So some of the other programs are a little clunky with that. But what I did is I, I remember that information had come across and it was towards the end of the last eight weeks. And I'm thinking, well, it doesn't do my class any good. So I'm just going to go ahead and research this now uh, for you guys. And hopefully that will uh, it, you'll be able to use it through not only this semester, but hopefully through the year. I'm not sure how long this will be. But what I'm doing, and James, I'll come to you in one second. What I'm doing is I emailed our IT higher up person that kind of is in charge of this. And she emailed back, that was last night, I emailed her. She emailed back this morning saying, uh, send the names and email addresses of the students in your class. And they're going to do, and that had to be the C, S, D format or whatever it was. And so learn something there. It's always good when you're learning multiple things. Learn something last night, learn something today. Um, so always a good day, but she's going to be working on that, getting you the Adobe, I believe, Pro, so we won't have, have that issue anymore. Because when I put in there Adobe Pro to her in the email, she didn't say, oh, no, it's not Pro or anything like that. And that was what Pro is what we were able to download because of a link that TCC provided. I say we uh, as instructors, and that, that's coming really handy with signing things and all of that. That I'm, I am working on that, and I'll get that to you as soon as I see more information, hopefully before the end of the week. James, James Meek, go ahead. Uh, just wanted to re-clarify on that the, it allows you to do, if it's like one thing, like the D sheets, you can all put it in as one PDF. But if you're trying to put like one of our drawings, the hand drawings, into the PDF group as the uh, um, CAD drawings, it, you have to have Pro for that. Okay, thanks for that clarification. Yeah, okay. Um, so, yeah, that's good to know. Um, so, when you get the Pro, you will be able to do uh, for a related assignment. This is a related assignment now. So, we have all the front yard assignments, uh, whatever they are. Say we have four of them. 
and one of them is a a, scan, a sketch, and the other ones are actually in CAD on D sheets. Once you get the pro for what James is saying, I just my lights just flashed here. I don't know what's going on. Uh, what James just said was that now you can get that sketch along with the CAD D sheets. Once you have the pro, you can get them into one email. And guys, you know, there's two two thoughts, and I don't know what you guys are thinking because, and I can't see your faces. And a lot, a lot of times, even when I can see your faces, I can't read your minds. Which if I could read your minds, it'd probably be a scary thing. It'd be even more scary if you could read my mind. So let's just not even go there. But but the main thing is, is this that's supposed to use in industry. So you have to get used to these things uh, like Excel and Word and Adobe Pro and some of these other file extensions um, and get used to be able to, to find these. And Google is just great if you don't know about them or you know, what the heck does CSV or whatever that file extension stand for, you know, and, and, or PDF, what does it stand for? And, you know, if you want information like that, but it, we have a um, online class, uh, I guess it's online, um, a class that's basic computer um, class that teaches you about Word, Excel, and some probably some of these um, PDFs and some of these other file things, which, you know, a lot of students go, oh, I know all of that. But there's these programs in themselves are pretty powerful. Word is pretty powerful. Um, I still stumble through stuff when I'm trying to align and do things and I get frustrated with it because you know the spacing and I know how to do some things but I don't know how to do everything in Word or Excel. Uh, our son he works a lot in Excel in an Encore um, and he makes these macros or um, for these for the cells and does feel he's really into uh, data. He has to be into um, I guess he could be a data statistician as well um, but he's re really in, into that. He knows how to manipulate that. He comes over here to do something on the computer for me and he's like flying through it and you know, I said, hey how'd you do that and that you know he'll like take a few minutes to explain it to me so it doesn't hurt to take one of those classes what I'm saying and we're kind of you know as things get online we're kind of hitting these little stumbling blocks and um, I don't want to discourage you uh, in any way I want to try to provide the tools to overcome uh, these stumbling blocks so and thank you guys uh, James and James and all of, all of you They've been commenting and helping with this, and and James Meek even said he was doing some research on it. And his email this morning said he was doing some research on it and couldn't quite find what it is. So hopefully this will solve that. And I'm working on the PDF um, portion as well to get you that, and I hopefully will have something. If you don't mind, I'll just check real quick. There was a response back from our head IT person or the person in charge of that kind of thing. And she said she can upload uh, one file. So that was approval, and I haven't seen anything since that. So um, we'll move ahead on that topic. James Meek says, still no idea what a PNG file is, but your method fixes it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I don't either, James. That, that's another good Google question. I mean, we could Google all day on that. So, um, and, what, and I put out the email. I'm sorry. Well, it came as an email as well for extra credit. Uh, so to let you know um, what the details were on that extra credit. And just a show of hands, uh, did anybody see that email or that announcement on extra credit? Did you see that? All right, Jesse. And I think I saw somebody else flash across there. I'm not sure who it was. James, again. All right, all right. Come on, Eric, Kevin. All right. Yeah. Um, and then did anybody notice the points on it? Would you? Okay, James McGinn says yes. Yeah, 75, right. Yeah, I upped it. I said it 50, 75. Uh, maybe a little more detail in there, but again, uh, this is just copy and paste and reformatting. You're not going to have any citation, minimum of four pages. I did put some parameters on charts and graphs in there. Uh, so keep those you know, down. Don't give me, like I said, four pages of charts and graphs. It's not going to fly. I did put in there that you either get all credit or no credit. If you get zero credit, you have a chance to resubmit. The last submission has to be, and every submit, or whenever you send it in, has to be with a packet. The last uh, chance to submit the, that one extra credit is on packet seven. So, um, I don't know if I put the date on there or not, but that would be the last week of class, packet seven, um, be the last Monday of class. 
All right, so uh, the one email or announcement I didn't put out is about the trees, shrubs, uh, I, uh, ground cover, lawn, and annual perennial uh, plants. So I will put that out um, and make sure that you're aware to use um, in that category. And we'll be getting a little more into that in site plans. Uh, all right, I think that gets us, gets us caught up. One last thing I just thought of, tomorrow. All right, I have an 8.30 to 9.30 meeting on campus um, tomorrow. And then I have uh, it's a tour of the, our machine shop and showing a company. And then 9.30 to 10.30 is supposed to be another with a project manager when we were doing remodeling on that machine shop. COVID hit right when we were done and we didn't get a final walkthrough on that. So I'm going to do a final walkthrough because there's some issues down there. And I'm supposed to have an interview at 10. Um, we're going to hire another instructor from 10 to 11. But if you notice, I said 10 and 9.30 to 10.30 was the walkthrough. That's overlapping. So I'm going to have to jump out of that meeting, get to my office on TCC, do the interview, and hopefully that will end at 11. I have one other meeting after that to 11.30. So with that said, what I'm saying is if I'm not back here and signed in and the PowerPoint up and I'm up and running at 12.30 like usual, go ahead and start working on, on your stuff. Go ahead and log on, get in here. Um, but if I'm not here and not speaking, it's because I got tied up in traffic or got in an accident or died. One another thing. That's a, those are the only reasons I wouldn't be here. So I just want to give you a heads up. I should be here, but I just want to give you a heads up. Uh, <laughs> and again, says, let's hope not. Uh, which one, the accident, dying, or <laughs> or uh, running over on the interview? I think. <laughs> yeah, um, I hope not either, but I don't have any problem with dying. Uh, let you know. I know where I'm going. So. Um, so just a heads up on that. Uh, as Nick says, is there anyone who can replace you as an as an instructor? Uh, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of people that can replace me, but are they as good? Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, James McGinn says accident or the other. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So I'm sure they'll figure something out. Um, we'll get somebody. We do have a civil engineer. Uh, he's not a civil engineer. He's in the civil industry. He actually has his own business, um, and he teaches our civil classes, and he also does landscaping uh, classes as well. So he would probably facilitate that. But um, you know, I, I could sit here with you know, broken arms. In fact, I have cracked ribs right now and cartilage problems and a busted up finger from a bicycle accident. So I can sit here and and uh, facilitate the class <laughs> if it was on it was face to face i couldn't walk around too well so maybe this is a good thing <laughs> james makes his ouch yeah and i'll be i'll be healed up in about another you know six weeks or so so i should be good to go it takes about that long to from past experience it takes about that long for me to heal on the rib portion i don't know why this finger thing isn't going down but it's kind of bothering me anyway Enough of that. Okay, let's go into this now. The PowerPoints, uh, as I said, we're doing site planning uh, today. And we'll talk about, let me back up, and I think I have another shot of this uh, site plan, fully enlarged. We're going to talk about some details that's going to go into our front yard site plan. And as I said before, all these, all that information that we're covering in this class is uh, does apply to our final project, all right? So, uh, and I, I'm going to try, and I, I shouldn't even say this, I'm going to try to put out a schedule for your final project, because I, as I said yesterday and probably the day before, I'm not going to have every part of the final project as an assignment. So it's going to be up to you to start working on this and start putting these sheets together uh, to have them done by the last week of finals. And I think I gave you already a few days for the final project. There will be some things as assignments that I'll say, hey, send in your uh, irrigation plan um, as an assignment. But not every uh, not every one of the six sheets will I be um, asking for. And just the uh, testing for the 
alarm system just went off on a clock on Wednesday, first Wednesday of the week. I don't know if you guys hear it where you're at. Anyway, so site plans, we'll talk about what's involved in that. First, we're going to define what a site plan is, a land, um, the landscape architectural plan, a detailed engineering drawing of proposed improvements. Um, this is on a specific area, a specific lot, usually one at a time. So includes things such things as a building footprint. Now, with that said, most of you are just showing the building footprint uh, of your house. You did it from Google Maps, which actually is fairly accurate because the footprint that you're showing shows the overhang um, of the house. And if you had, let's just say, a front porch um, that was uh, not within the roof line, you would want to show that uh, portion. Um, but the reason I say you guys are doing it correctly, because in some of my classes and, and projects uh, for a site plan, they'll just show the wall line, which is not correct. You want the overhang to show on that. So that's just a little side note, but that's what you're showing. The other thing I wanted to say, I think in one of the examples, it shows the roof plan. You do not have to show the roof plan on your site plan or any of the plans. It's the outline that we get from Google Maps is fine. Uh, the building footprint, travelways, and that can be walkways and, and uh, stone or concrete walkways. Of course, parking, which deals with the drive areas. Um, drainage facilities, so we're going to talk about uh, getting drainage in, in here as well. Um, sanitary sewers, so if you know where your sewer inlet is um, on, on your house, uh, you can kind of estimate where that sewer line uh, runs because Every house has a sewer clean out uh, at some point, and usually it's uh, towards, the, towards the front or might be towards the back as well, just depending. So you'll be able to plot that out. This is on your front yard project. It's going to be a little bit different on the rotunda project, um, but we'll do what we can, right? Uh, water lines. So you can uh, usually, uh, you, most places I would assume have water running through there. A uh, house. Some may have wells, um, but you still have a water line running to your house at some some point. Um, and you can usually kind of figure out without doing without digging, without calling out dig alert, which is not called dig alert out here. I forgot what it's called, but uh, to do the line. I'll come over to the uh, chat box in just a second. Um, any trails? So if you have a natural area that might involve some trails uh, through there, um, probably not in your front yard. Uh, any lighting, so whether it's uh, secured lighting uh, for the exterior, secured to the house, you'll show that, or if it's some planned um, low voltage lighting that we had discussed, uh, landscape and garden elements. All right, so Larry goes to, says, uh, septic tank in backyard. So yes, uh, the back, that's fine. You have septic tank, so you probably don't have anything in the front yard that's tied to sewer. So you can just make a note of that, Larry. Um, just check that off on the list. Uh, put the notes in the title block, and you're good on that. So you can use this and the following information as guidelines of what you need to cover on the site. Good question, Larry. Thank you. Uh, such a site, uh, such a plan of a site is a graphic representation. So you're just basically doing a drawing, uh, the landscaping, and any other structure as part of development. Project. So they're looking at it as a, as a whole. What is your, what is your focus? Uh, what is the study area? Well, in this case, is our front yard, and that's what we're going to uh, uh, use this information to apply it to our study area. Um, so I plan is a set of construction drawings that a builder or contractor uses to for improvements of the property. So that's why all these things have to be scaled. Uh, if you get out on a site and some of the drawings you're going to have dimensions on, some of them you won't. And the, and the contractor or there is a dimension that he needs that you didn't put on, uh, not that you were required to, but maybe uh, wasn't required as part of the study, and so he can scale it. Uh, when we're talking about landscaping and we're talking about, uh, I hate to say this, but running uh, pipes um, to the house or in the ground, um, if you're off you know, I don't want to say half a foot, but say a quarter of a foot, you're, you're doing okay. Um, when you get in manufacturing, you know, you're dealing in ten thousandths of, of an inch uh, for accuracy, so it's a different feel completely. Uh, 
when we were laying out curb and gutter and surveying. Um, I would, you know, I was so used to laying out property lines in some very exclusive areas in California. Not that I lived in them, but we would go down to some of these beach areas where they're fighting over, you know, five hundredths of an inch. You know, property line coffee is so expensive over there. Um, we lay out curb and gutters, and I was trying to get accurate within a couple of hundreds, and my boss would say, we're not laying out a piano here. You know, so just get within 500, 600, and you're good to go on the curb and gutter. James again says, I'm sorry, James Mick says, my father said fractions of the inches don't matter. The contractors in construction usually, yes. Um, so that's a great point. Uh, when you're building a 40 foot wall, that wall is supposed to be from exterior uh, two by four, the end of the two by four, the other end of the two by four, 40 feet. And you end up being 39 and uh, 39 feet and uh, nine, 10 inches. Uh, they're going to go with it because the lumber's warped, um, a whole bunch of variables in there. Now I go to my cart that I'm building for, that I built. I finished that project. I don't know if I mentioned that, but I finished my work table project and my cart because my table has to be collapsible all the way so it's a four foot wide by eight feet long table that I fold in half etc cetera, etc cetera. I built a cart for it on wheels I have three supports on that cart well when I put those supports in um, I'm still trying to figure out angles and don't laugh at me I teach about angles and I was just having a hard time with angles anyway the uprights are this way and then the back back supports are at an angle well i have three of them on this i think it's about four foot wide it's a little bigger than four foot wide cart and the middle one was leaning too far forward by probably i don't know a tenth maybe not even a tenth maybe eight hundredths of an inch so the other ones weren't supporting at all the, the left and right one weren't supporting at all so i spent most of the day uh, not most of the day but the time that i was out there getting them exactly to line up so that everything was every support was supporting the uh, table so now i was down into you know hundreds of an inch to get the everything exact so a little bit different i guess maybe the uh james you were talking about in construction that's a little bit different and i don't want to say carpentry because you're going to think i do this fine work which i'm not even there uh, but carpentry work or construction work a little bit different and then manufacturing a little bit. So it depends on the industry, on the preciseness that we're looking at. All right. Uh, just to let you know. So that's one th reason I enjoy landscaping. I enjoy surveying. I enjoy uh, uh, construction because it's not these little machine parts that drive me absolutely crazy my first semester that I was taking drafting. Um, and everybody has their gift, right? Um, and everybody has their, their interest, and usually their interest is motivated by their gift. Site plans are often prepared by a design consultant. So uh, a des there again is that word design. Um, if you are doing a project that uh, involves a, um, where you have to get permits and things, you may have to have a engineer of some type uh, put the stamp it can't be a design consultant but right here it says who must be either licensed engineer or architect there is a uh, a lady who has her own business um, that we've sent um, students to that I've worked for her over the years and she runs it I think she runs it out of her house or maybe she has a studio um, something like that but she has her own business I thought no I think that she does have a, a an office I just remember that now um, she has her own business. Um, she has herself and a uh, secretary, I think. And then she'll hire students um, to do some work. And she does not, she's not a licensed architect. She's not an engineer. Um, she's a designer because of years and connections that she has with the building industry. She can design single story homes without getting them uh, a stamp uh, architectural license on it. They do have to go through a plan check, um, still, uh, like anything else. But um, in Texas, my understanding that you don't have to have a, uh, you don't have to be a licensed architect to do design work. Um, in California, you have to be licensed to sneeze. Um, so when I was a landscape, uh, landscape uh, installer, um, 
We had a landscape, what I called, it was a tap landscape and design company, I think was the name of it. And I could do design work. Uh, but when I went out to actually do the install, I had to get permits for everything. Uh, they had to review the plans. If there was anything structural, then I would have to probably get a licensed engineer on that. Just to operate in a city, I had to get licensed for each city that I that I operated in, whether it was installation or maintenance. And they would come around and check you. On. So, um, so uh, out here in Texas, uh, it's a little different. Now, if you do uh, commercial, you have to be a licensed architect, commercial design. But that's for single family residents and I don't think that applies to part for single family residents you can be a designer um, but here it says you can it must be a designer to be either a licensed engineer or um, landscape architect or advanced all right in some situations you need to have that a site plan is a readable map of a residential uh, depicting a residential diagram depicting the plot of land so you start with the the perimeter um, of course, and lay that, lay that out. We got that from Google Maps. And uh, we, we're going to talk, start talking about where the house sits uh, within, within that site. And then we'll talk about the topography, so the land around that uh, we have to be concerned with. Um, and other features such as detached garage or gazebos or anything like that that you might have. Um, this one looks like it has. I think okay up here is the street um, but it has a little courtyard area that does it looks like it may be uh, can't quite read that it might might be a, a little porch uh, some lattice work for a covered area so, um, so things like that will be called out so that's our that's our scope in here uh, power lines uh, you will be indicate those on the site plans if you have those most most places have I want to say most places because there's a lot of older developments here, but uh, some places have underground utilities, uh, some have uh, above ground, some have like us, we have underground, but we have uh, these wonderful large uh, transformers in the back in the corner, um, that we like to hide from machines that you're next to do because you're supposed to be 15 feet away, um, et cetera, et cetera. And that's a whole nother story I won't get into. Um, and Smith says power lines in the back, but most are underground in my area. So yeah, they're in the backyard. Uh, the only thing you're worried about right on this scope of work is the front yard. So James, you wouldn't have to call those out. Uh, you can make a note on that, um, that um, probably I would say your, is, your meter um, is either on the side or the back of the house, I would assume. Um, so if the meter was, um, coming was touching the scope of area on the side yard like ours if I did our front yard design I probably would include our side yard uh, up to the um, the gate uh, on the on both sides uh, we have one side we have a little larger side area or deeper side side yard and the other one but the one side that's a little deeper I would include that on the landscape plan because I have it landscaped um, you can see it from the street, and so I want it to look nice. Um, but we also have the um, electrical meter on that side, and I would just call that out as notes. So, um, and then James Nick says, I already called it out. Uh, a lot of these items needed, like the driveway and the fire hydrant and gas meter. So you're ahead of the game, James, for your site plan. Good, good. All right, um, easements. Now, easements are another thing. Um, you wouldn't know about easements unless you had a plat map uh, that this is one thing I was kind of surprised in Texas. They actually survey every piece of property um, that is uh, transitioned through escrow, sold or bought. Um, they actually survey it and they'll provide you an actual plat map that in California they, they had it in the past. I don't know if they should or not. Um, so, with that said, on sometimes on the plat map, it will show you easement, sometimes not. It'll show the boundary. Uh, typically, if you have, say, in our situation, and, and James, you probably even have this, even with the lines running in the back, you have an easement running through there. And what is the easement it is, is a area designated, and usually in our case, is probably, I believe it's five foot uh, to one side of the fence and five foot to the other side of the fence. 
Um, this easement allows electrical companies or whatever the easement is for, um, gas, water, sewer, to come back there and uh, do work on there without notice. Now, typically, they'll give you notice. Um, as I was referring to the transformer that we have in back in the, uh, what is that, northwest uh, corner, um, we have our garden boxes uh, around that. They're only about 16, 18 inches away. On that transformer, I don't know if you've ever seen anybody service that, but they can come in and they can rip out any landscaping. You cannot build any permanent structure in front of these boxes or any permanent structure inside easement. And they can come back there without notice, rip out all, you know, they can rip out my planter boxes, the, the uh, plants we have around there to access this because it's accessed from one side. There's a housing. Um, it's probably, uh, probably, I'll just say 24 by 24 inches and probably 24 inches high, something like that. And they have a, it's like a, um, a cabinet door on hinges that will open up and they can get in there and service the um, transformer if need be. Um, so all that can be done, they can rip it out and they don't have to replace it. That's within their easement, that's their right of way. So you, if you don't know where the easements are, if you don't have a transformer, if you have power lines running overhead, there's probably a good easement on that uh, that you can just figure out. Again, if that's the backyard, don't have to worry about it. Uh, front yard uh, easements, if you have electrical um, or electrical or gas running up the side uh, to service uh, a gas meter to service your house. You probably have a, um, easement, a utility easement that serve it, has gas and electric if they're running the same. Typically, they won't run them on the same lines or same easement line for different reasons. The electrical is supposed to be 18 inches down and I think uh, gas is 24 or something like that. I forgot the requirements on that. So, uh, and James Meek says, uh, they broke our fence in front of the pole since it was uh, trapped in a no man's land area. <laughs> Interesting. And they broke the fence, but they didn't replace it? Is that? It, it, it didn't, they didn't replace it. Uh, the, the transformer on the pole blew, blew at one point, and the company came in, plus, <laughs> The way it's built is like the four properties that border that pole, yeah. none of them wanted to buy that little section of land. So there's this tiny little rectangle that's been fenced in. They just came through our, our yard and broke that piece of the fence, worked on the thing, and then uh, then left. And nice. nice, yeah. Well, the, the thing was, the developer didn't buy it for whatever reasons. Maybe there was two developers butting up heads or something. But so they didn't buy it, but they still the easement was there. Um, so they're not responsible uh, for that. Yeah. So great point, James. Um, they they will do that. And uh, I don't know if there's any anybody. And James, I don't know if you saw the transformer go, but it's quite a sight. No stain on the wall. Yeah, Bill Green Flash. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the one that we saw. Down the street one day during a storm, our my, our son and I were going to get something and coming back, and it was green and blue, just lit up like like nothing. So they're exciting and dangerous too. So. And the really old ones used to have a oil in them that oh. had a, a lighter uh, a lower flash point than uh, they do now. So transformers used to go up in fireballs. Yeah. Of just boom and a flash. Yeah, yeah. They 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 use and that was the what the chemicals they put out to was hazardous. So um yeah, they've come a little little further um in, in it. So yeah, uh, one of my brothers uh works for a large electrical electrical company in California and he he deals with all these uh requirements on transformers and, and, and stuff and installation that that's a whole nightmare. Um, Texas or California. So thank you, James, for that. Um, as we move through this, the next slide shows the uh, some dimensions on here. These are called major dimensions. Uh, you're showing setbacks. And there's my screen. It goes blank um, every day. I don't know if it's at 119 or not, but 
so nice because it just uh, I can't see anything. I know you can, and I think if I answer, go back. Uh, get back to it. So uh, the major uh, dimensions on this. Again, we were just focusing on the front yard. Uh, yeah. So here's the front yard. This particular uh, site. Um, you don't have to get out and measure your street. I'm not calling for that, but just set back, say if this was the curb line, uh, figure out what the setbacks are, side setbacks. And this is just for the front, guys. You don't have to get into the back. You don't have to get in all these details here. I'm just focusing on, on the front area. Here they don't show a fence line, um, so which is kind of, I'm looking at this a little more detail, is kind of weird because they do have a pool. And as in California, and I'm sure out here, six foot fence, uh, self closing gates. And uh, I'm not seeing that. Uh, so, James, makes sense, depends on the city. Great. Um, so, that's just not encouraging at all. Um, so, this is a, a typical setup that you'll have. Again, um, some of your plans here, you guys can, uh, you know, put the, put the house. Um, give yourself more room to do drawing for a larger drawing. So if you move the house um, back on your sheet and just give you more area to show the, the front yard, uh, that's acceptable um, as well. There's another one here, and this is the one I'm talking about. They show, they're show they showing actually the roof, uh, some hips on here on, the, on this roof plan. Um, uh, this is a, I'm sorry, some gables over here. And this is a hip type roof here. You do not have to show your roof plan on there. Just show uh, what you traced out on Google Maps. Um, they have the call outs here and again, some major uh, dimensions on here. And they will definitely need to call out the plants, um, call out the driveway, concrete driveway, um, the width on that, et cetera. So get a little more detailed on this site plan. Um, uh, Um, oh, so James has asked why would they need the dimensions, I think is what, oh, the roof, um, I don't know. Uh, it may have to do with drainage, um, so they're showing how the roof drains and therefore will tie into the grading um, on this and the drainage on there. Uh, great question on that. Um, that is, a, I do have that required, not required, uh, option on the site plans that we do in our um, some of our, our CAD classes, uh, but the only reason is is to, to kind of depict what what the building is. Um, but on a site plan, the only thing I can think of is they're looking at drainage aspects on this. And when they start getting into flat land that doesn't have a lot of drainage, um, and with the downpours that we do have here in Texas, the calculations have to be pretty accurate, especially especially if water drains back to the house so that can be a big problem james meek says we have a hor horrible drip line yeah uh so james do you have gutters around your house we probably should but no we don't uh so we've actually done some of our landscaping to prevent uh at least in the front uh in the back we have not uh but we've done some of the landscaping to prevent the foundation damage from the unprotected drip line. Yes, that's that's a huge factor. Uh, you have erosion, um, foundation issues with with it coming off. Uh, All our foundations like on like already sitting on bedrock. It was like they looked at the construction workers looked at our. They were like, well, we don't have to dig very far for bedrock. Oh, that's cool. That's a good thing. Um, but yeah, it can be in, in some other situations. It can be really uh, problematic uh, with it with the runoff from a roof if it's not contained. Um, I have I'm not I try to be good at it cleaning out our gutters. I don't have any of those screen protectors, and if I don't get those cleaned out in time for downpour, we'll actually have it coming up over the gutters, and that's creating uh, problems. I can create problems with our uh, foundation and erosion. So good point on that. We actually have a point on our yard where it's the runoff is sinking into the ground and then popping out of the hill because there's like a hill that we're built on a little bit uh, that 
to the other side of to our, one of our neighbor's yards, and the area where it seems to drain is slowly sinking and cutting into the hill. <laughs> so I probably am going to talk to my mom, who's the major landscaper here, uh, at least the one for approval, uh, and see if we can plant something there to. Yeah, that's that's a whole dilemma. There are a lot of remedies for that. Um, with a little research, I think you can find the right one. But um, erosion is just, especially if your house is raised up a little bit, um, can just be a real big factor on that. Um, it's yeah. nowhere close to hurting the the house's foundation, but the limestone. But you can get like caves built and sinkholes eventually so yeah yeah absolutely sinkholes is a whole nother topic right i mean that's yeah insanity yeah and then if you have underground which that rotundra uh did have an underground stream i guess of some kind so even the uh, foundation it was set on the bedrock it was set on uh, didn't hold up so um, Iman says, I don't have a property line. My site is a uh, part of a complex. Okay, so just do the, um, uh, you have your the house, not the house, the uh, office that you did, you're doing the landscaping in the front. So you, part of your property line will be your street. Um, so it goes beyond the parking, right? And be the street. And then you should be able to depict um, just the area around. I'll call it the common area. You can call that your your property line. Um, does that make sense, Simone? Okay. All right. Perfect. Yeah, there'll be some different situations. Don't um, hesitate to ask, and either through chat or um, you can uh, email me as well or meet. Um, so yeah, some different situations. Um, here again, do not show the roof. You don't have to show if you want to, it, it, you can, uh, but just make sure you call out things like this is a residence. Here they didn't call out, uh, well, they have a garage area here, so this, I'm not sure what this building is here. It could be a little shop or something like that. A little envious there. Um, so, uh, but make sure you do the call outs, make sure you have the major distances called. You will be calling out the plants and showing the hardscape and softscape, um, and you will be showing drainage flow uh, on there. All right, so some of the things that uh, um, Mr. Lynch here says, eight uh, cycle step the process, so a site plan, defining the problem, which we did, and I think we've seen this slide before, I can't remember, back on SWAT. Um, define the problem, uh, programming and analysis of the site and user. All right, so what is it gonna be used for and analyze what the, uh, not only the type of usage, but who's using, using it, you know, is it a park? Um, like Iman has a, an office, a front of an office she's doing, uh, so you have a lot of pedestrian traffic. Uh, so that whole analysis has to be looked at. Schematic design and preliminary cost estimate. We'll get into cost estimates in about uh, about a week or so. Um, develop and design uh, detailed uh, costing. Now you can see this uh, costing is just a huge factor. It's come up, up three and four. Um, contract documents, contract documents can either be anything from written uh, to your actual design portion. It can be a contract as well uh, that, that you can sign off on and the actual construction and then the occupation. So some steps in and the reasons for some good uh, site planning. All right, so that concludes site planning today, right on time. And uh, next uh, the next subject will be the irrigation system that we'll get into and just um, chipping these off again. Make sure that you're applying all of these that we've covered to your site analysis. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, your your um, DCC garden rotunda that you're designing. So you're taking all this information and start developing those sheet sets um, and the information that on those sheet sets. All right. Um, James says, I think mine is going to cost around $500. Not sure. Well, that's, uh, that's good, good, good pricing already, but we'll, we'll see as we get more into this, um, on this. All right. Um, so we are going to take a break now and I'll let you post questions. Um, 
And I'm putting in here be back at uh, 140. And post questions, and we'll come back for the second um, part of lecture at 1.40. I'll see you all in a bit. I'll stop the recording, and I'll see you back at 1.40. Uh, be back at 1.40. All right, talk to you in a bit.